Hi, right, it's time for another math. Easy. So we're going to discuss all well, transformation of functions. Basically, look at a useful example on graphing trigonomic functions here. This is basically a random guy uh, commented on one of my YouTube videos asking if I could do a video on vertical horizontal translations for sine and cosine. And, as my, and I thought I might as well do one just a bit more complex, including horizontal and vertical uh, stretching or compression as well. Here. So we're going to look at these two examples here. This, these two are exact same, except there's going to be a sine is going to be a cosine here so we're going to graph this one out and this one could be graphed easily from this using just a relation between cosine and sine which I'll, which I'll uh, derive which is pretty easy. Okay, so now let's uh, look at this example one here basically uh, y equals 3 sine bracket 2x plus pi plus 5 here and th this is in radians obviously just why the pi is there. So basically to graph this if you recall from my earlier video on Tr horizontal translations, vertical translations, etc. Basic transformations in general, you can learn a lot about that. But now we're going to apply to to sine. So basically, in this case here, what we could do is just basically compare this to the original function, which is sine of x here. So what this whole thing that we're doing, all these factors, three, two, pi, and five, all it's doing is transforming this function. So yeah, I just wrote that down there. So basically, now what we have to do, let's just take this uh, step by step. We'll compare every single factor here. So we'll look at this three here and then we'll build up in, until we get the full transformation here. Yeah, so now if we uh, look at this three sine of x, ignore all other factors but this one and then compare it to this with the original sine here. Now this one here is a max and minimum values basically of the maximum in a sine is one, the minimum is going to be negative one here. And this one all we're doing is multiplying it here. So the max is going to be now in this case well three times one that's just equals to 3, and the minimum is going to be likewise negative 3. Yeah, so all we're doing here is vertically stretching it. So yeah, so yeah, that's all we're doing here, because all we're multiplying the max uh, and min or whatever, or whatever the value of sine is by this 3 here. So I need also recall from my earlier video on, on sine, cosine, trigonometry, and you'll see why it's maximum is 1, because this is the ratio. Yeah, so now just the next thing I want to do is to illustrate this little transformation here. If we look at this this function or this graph here, I have, I have it pretty big because we're going to transform it up here for the next transformation. But basically, if you look at this the original sine of x function here, and now let's look at the three sine of x function. Yeah, so in this case here, all we're going to be doing is stretching this out vertically until the maximum is going to be three. Let's just put this down now, because whatever value is, all we're going to be doing is multiplying it by three. Let's make it a bit higher. So I think yeah, this should be this should be pretty good here. So the the original one, this one is a maximum of one, minimum of of one here, and as you can see, it's up to pi, uh, up to two pi here. So and and this is the period of both of these actually is going to be, well, we'll just write that down. Period is equal to two pi, and a recall from our earlier video on trigonometry, basically period is the time when. It, yeah, it's basically the full length before it starts repeating itself because then uh, after this it's going to be the exact same as how it looks like here but on this side and also going left of it so, so we'll look something like this and goes down and similar for this all it is period is where it starts repeating its same pattern here yeah, and this one here just put down three sine of x making a rest so you see the difference here so now let's look at the next fact now the next one here is uh, we'll look at this two uh, two uh, x here and you just see how it transforms the function so we'll just compare this three sine two of x ignoring the other factors but including this one here and because we've already graphed it versus just the regular three sine of x here now to in order to understand what happens to the function here because the only difference in these cases are this two x here this one there's none there so we'll look at a couple values and we'll actually we'll just look at the period here the period is basically at x is equal to 2 pi and see what happens to the new function here so this one yeah this period is 2 pi so now let's look at what value of x if, if this is at x is equal to 2 pi what's the equivalent x for this one or the period yeah so just write that down here basically look at the equivalent value at x, x equals 2 pi or the periods and to do that we just set this equal to each other so it's sine 2 of x is a new transform function if it has the same value at basically 3 sine of 2 pi here. All we have to do now is equate these, and, and the only way that this is true if they're equal, this cancels, this cancels, and now this is a sign. They're both signs. The only way is if the insides equal each other, so it's 2x equals to 2 pi. This cancels, so x equals to pi in this case here. So this is the new period. 
and it's the and it's the equivalent basically equivalent value at x equals 2 pi for this one it's the same as x equals to pi for this function here so as you can see this one is a horizontal compression and just basically just from this this uh, example here if this was let's say 1 over 2 etc uh, let's say etc then this is going to because it's 1 divided by 2 if you solve for this one's going to be a 4 pi and this would be horizontal um, extension yeah so in this one uh, would you would have a period of basically 4 pi so that's in this case here but we'll, we'll ignore that and now let's uh, graph this new uh, transformation yeah so if we basically uh, transform this new one is 3 sine of x up to the the 3 sine basically 2x Remember, all we're doing, the period is going to be going to pi. Instead of 2 pi, now we're going to be shifting to pi. And everything else shifts as, as well. So this is basically compressing it. So we're going to have something that looks like this here. Yeah, so this one is going to be 3 sine 2x here. So now the next step is basically uh, like uh, taking into account this new factor here, this plus pi, and see how it changes the new form uh, transformation that we've already developed. Yeah, so like always, we would write down the new one here. So 3 sine 2x plus pi compare this to just the regular 3 sine 2 of x here and see how this changes here. Now for this one here, this is a horizontal translation, so what we could do is just put in values in this case here. If we put in, let's say, x equals to 0 and see what's the equivalent one for this case. Yeah, or I just write down find equivalent value. Actually, it's find equivalent x value for this one. If it's if this one's going to be x equals 0 here, what's this going to be now? And to do that, we'll just equate them as well, uh, like before. So basically, we equate them here. We're going to have 3 sine 2x plus pi. And this one yeah, equals to 3 sine 0 here. And as you can see, the only way this is equal, well, these obviously cancel. only way that, they're, that they equal each other is if the inside brackets equ equal each other. So it's going to be 2x plus pi equals 0. Solve this. You're going to have x equals to negative pi over 2 here. So basically, as you see, this is a horizontal translation. Yeah, a horizontal translation to the left here because this is going to be negative now. So the equivalent value at x equals to 0 here is the same for this function when this is equal to negative pi over 2 here. And so that's because of this plus. This was a negative, you're going to be a horizontal translation to the right because you'll have a negative here when you equate the 0. This negative will shift it over. You're going to have a positive, uh, positive term here. Yeah, so now let's just transform this one here. So this is the newest one we have. Let's shift this over to the left for value of negative pi over 2. This should be negative there. Basically from the 0 origin where this one was, if we're, you're just going to be shifting it to the left here. Yeah, so this one here, just write down 3 sine 2x plus pi. So it, as you can see, it looks it's similar to the other functions now. Uh, this should be a bit left there, but uh, anyways. So uh, yeah, all it is is shifting it to the left. So you can see we're doing step by step here. So now let's look at the next one. Or actually, the last part here is this plus five here. This one's just a vertical translation here, and I'll just write that down here. Now we'll just compare the what we have now: the total three sine two x plus pi plus five versus just the regular three sine two x plus pi here. And to look at this one here, we just look at the maximum minimum values of this one here. So this one is just going to be the maximum of this is going to be well one. The minimum is going to be negative 1, but then we're going to be multiplied by 3. So we're going to get basically 3 max, negative 3 minimum here. So, and that's this, this value here. So we're going to have 3 here, max, negative 3 minimum. So when we add the 5 here, we're going to get a new max of equal to 3 plus 5, which is going to be 8. And a, max, and a minimum of negative 3 plus 5, which equals to 2 here. And also the center line, as you from the sine curve, the center line is going to be y equals to zero, just because where everything oscillates around it, where this the zero part is here. So now when we add a five here, the new center line is going to be y equals to five here. And I'll basically illustrate this center line in the graph that for the next one here. Yeah. So basically now if we have this one here, we just shift this upwards, well, because it has to reach a maximum of eight, minimum of, um, of two, and the center line. This is the center line y equals zero, where this everything oscillates around it. As it goes up and down around this y equals 0, it's going to be y equals to 5 now because we're just adding a 5 to every single value there. So we just keep scrolling up. Let's just put it here. Let's see what it look like. So there's it goes to a maximum of 8. And it goes to a 0 value. Actually, this is better. So something like this. Yeah, I just fix up the scale now just to make it look a bit better. So yeah, this is a 6 here. So basically it goes up like this. So it looks something like this one here. So this is our final curve now. We, we, we compressed it. We extended it vertically upward. 
we translate it to the left here. Now we're going to translate it up here. Now I just want to write down here, this was a vertical translation. If it was negative, it would have been translating down. Since it's positive, we shift everything upwards up here. But now, uh, remember, the center line is going to be 5 here, and it, this is a uh, sine curve. Let's just draw this better. So this will be the y equals uh, 5 line. And then as you can see here, the period is going to be pi. So this is a negative pi over 2 here, and this, this full length is going to be from here to here is pi. It's a period, and, it, and it, at every pi, it's going to repeat itself. So then let's just draw this out. This is going to be pi here. This is going to be 3 pi over 2. So that's going to be the new, uh, it's going to look exactly the same as, as before. So it's going to go up like this, goes down to pi, goes down to negative 2, and goes back up here. But yeah, it doesn't look too nice here, but, it, but yeah, just ignore my bad drawing. But basically it goes down to 2, and it goes back up, etc. And keeps going on forever. And this is our new graph of the function here. Basically 3 sine 2x plus pi uh, plus 5. So now let's look at example 2. Basically the exact same function, but now there's a cosine here. And to do this, it's pretty easy actually. We just have to recall our cosine and sine identity here. And so if we look at the sine and cosine curves, this one's a sine of x here. That's just this regular curve. Now this cosine curve, this one here, as you can see here at, at the pi over 2, this sine of x is equal to 1, that's, that's a 1 there, and, and cos is equal to 0 here. So it's, And then this one here at 0, you're going to have a 1 value for cos, but a 0 for sine here. And, and, and the only difference between these two is just that it's shifted to the left here. So th this is pi over 2 here. So all it is is a shift of pi over 2. And you can also recall from a, just a more uh, like a solid proof on this in my earlier video, you can see video link below. But basically now this one here, so this cosine, all it's equals to, oh, I'll just write it here, the relation of cosine to sine is going to be cos x plus pi over 2. Remember the plus means translating to the left, because all the sine is, all we're doing is shifting it to the left, is equal to sine of x. Actually, no, I made, I made a mistake, I got them mixed around. So the the the, the sine uh, is shifted to the left. So this is was sine, and now we're shifting it left by the plus, like I showed above. So then that's going to be cosine of x. So all we do, if you have a x plus pi over 2, that just means we're shifting it left, and that's all this difference is. So now we can apply this this rule, this one right here. This, uh, I'd trigger it any to this uh, function here compared to the above. Yeah, so if we compare these two, now the, if we want to write these both in sine function, all we do is add, in this case, a plus pi over 2 here, meaning we're shifting this yeah, to the left here. We add this actually to the sine function here, so not in this one. So I'll just erase that here. So now we'll just write this equivalent one. So this part here is equal to 3 sine, yeah, sine 2x plus pi, then plus this one here. So this value equals this one based on the identity above. So now we could just pick any random point here because we know it's a translation. So then we just pick any point and then see the equivalent one of where it, where it's going to be shifted on this side here. So with this one we could just look at, 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 at x equals to 0. What is the equivalent, equivalent x value here? So all we do is just plug that in and compare them. Yeah, so basically this whole function here equals to 3 sine 0, or that's the 2x is the, becomes 0 plus pi and etc. So this one here, the 5s cancel. The threes cancel after that, and then the only way that these are equal is if the insides of the both signs equal each other. So equating them here, we'll get this, the pi's would cancel here, and simplifying this, we're going to get actually x is equal to negative pi over 4 here. So this one is a horizontal translation to the left. Yeah, to the left here, and that's we're not surprised, that's what the plus is, the plus mix would make it a negative translation here. So now let's just, uh, we could just graph this in, inside this big giant graph here. Yeah, so basically now if we just shift this over, number at x equals to 0, the new value is going to be at negative pi over 4 here. So we'll just shift this over. So this will just go something like this here. And now, yeah, as you can see, this function here is the new, yeah, the new function 3 cos 2x plus pi plus 5 here. So all, all it is is the same as this one, but shifted left. That's what I meant by if we graph this one, it's easy to graph this one here. Yeah, and basically I graphed it with Google just to compare all of them. If I graph sine of x, 3 sine, 2x plus pi, plus 5, and then the cos one. As you can see here, this is the sine. It goes from 0, this is pi, 2 pi. And then and then similarly for the, this red one is the sine. So all we do is shift this, compress it, and then translate it up and stretch it. This is going to be shifted 
uh, this is going to be to pi over 2. So this value is pi over 2. This is pi, uh, actually, this is pi over 2 here. So we shift this here. It's going to go look something like this one here. And then the cosine, it's shifted exactly this, but by a negative pi over 4 here. Yeah, and you can see that just from this one here. So this was at 0. This is going to be at pi over 4 here. This is going to be pi, etc. Pi is at the uh, pi over 2, I mean. So that's pi over 4. As you can see, it looks exactly like our curve here. So there's our curve. It's exactly the same. The cosine is lagging behind the, the sine, etc. And it's just shifted, etc. Well, that's all for it. Hopefully you learned from this uh, pretty uh, extensive example here. I really wanted to try to illustrate as much as I can, simplify it in a step-by-step -step method. Hopefully you learned from this one here. Let me know if you, uh, any, any have any questions, etc. And also you could download these notes and Dropbox link below. That's all for today. Hopefully you learned. And yeah, stay tuned for another math easy solution.